Great. Well, welcome everybody. And uh, no, I lost my agenda again. Where's Todd? Uh, there we go. <laughs> this is the thing with uh, go to meeting is that like it hides if you try and minimize to so look at something else, then you can't find the window. Anyway, so welcome everybody. Um, I guess uh, on the agenda today we have the election results from the TSC chair election, Hackfest planning as usual. Um, and then I think we're probably ready to have Mark review finally the, uh, uh, the performance and scale working group charter. We've been around the block a few times, people went on vacations and so forth, but uh, I think we're ready to go with that. Then we have a proposal that's I think somewhat related with hyperledger caliper proposal um, that was discussed extensively in the document itself, but Dan sent a note this morning, I think echoes the concern that I had, which was I didn't see a whole lot of discussion about the relevance of this project proposal with the, the performance and scale working group. So I think we need to have that conversation. And then there's a, another proposal for Hyperledger, Interledger Java, um, which I think was sent out yesterday. And then we can get a security team update and project reporting discussion rejuvenated uh, if we have time. Is there anything else anybody wants on the agenda? Okay, if not, Todd, I'll kick it off. All right, sure thing. Uh, so the TSC election concluded uh, two weeks ago. We moved into the chair election. Uh, excited to announce uh, Chris Ferris has been reelected as chair. Uh, so congratulations, Chris. Um, excited to continue working with you on that. Um, all right, moving into Hackfest planning. Chicago Hackfest is coming up in a couple weeks here. If you have not registered, please do so as soon as possible. Uh, we will hit a cap for that uh, and have to wait list people. So get your registrations in now. Uh, in the agenda, we also had a link for the draft agenda for the Chicago Hackfest. Any topics you want to see get covered, anything you want to present on, anything you want to collaborate on, please get that dropped in there. Um, we'll get that all mapped out uh, on the morning of day one. And then the second agenda item is related to the final Hackfest of the year in Europe. Uh, we did get that narrowed down to two dates. Uh, we sent out a doodle poll and also kind of looked at the other events uh, in the blockchain landscape. And it really looks like the, the preference and what works best with all the other events is to lock in the dates of December 5th and 6th. In Lisbon, uh, there is space available for that. So this is pretty easy to move forward with. So this is really a call for any objections or concerns to lock that in as the final Hackfest of the year. I'm not hearing any objections. Sounds like fun. I've never been to Portugal, so. <laughs> All right, sounds, sounds good. We will get that confirmed uh, and we will get a registration site up for that and some more, more details out on that shortly. And with that, uh, I think we're onward to Mark in the PSWG charter. It sounds like uh, that group approved everything and now it's really back to the TSC. Sure, so, I mean, we've been through it a few times and I think last time the TSC was happy with it, but the PSWG hadn't voted on it. So I don't know how you guys want to proceed and, and, you know, for timing perspective, do you want me to go through the whole thing again or? What do people want to do? Do people need to have a refresher on the charter? Um, we, uh, you know, I guess Mark, you, you captured it, I think, well, we had um, gone through and discussed a draft that you had presented to your work group, but they had yet not yet worked on. And I think, as you know, the consensus was this looks good, but we wanted to get uh, any last minute changes from your from the work group itself. So um, uh, given that there have been no changes, I think, is that right? Since then, I think we're probably ready for a vote unless anybody wants to object and wants to dig in a little bit deeper. Right. I think the only change since the last time I talked with uh, the TSC was I've added this short paragraph, uh, which is in italics because it was the change that the PSWG will oversee the work and direction 
of any performance and scalability projects within Hyperledger, which was based on feedback from this call. Right. All right, then Todd, I think we're ready for a vote. All right, sounds good. We'll run through the list quickly. Uh, Arno? Yes. Balha? Yes. Finn? Yes. Chris? No. Dan? Yes. Greg? Yes. Hart? Yes. Jonathan? Yes, totally. Kelly? Yes. Mick? Yes. Nathan? Yes. All right, that's approved unanimously. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. And uh, uh, so next up is the Hyperledger Caliper proposal. Is Victor on? Or somebody want to present this? Uh, this is Victor. Uh, I'm here. I think we have discussed about Caliper last uh, week. And uh, I'm not sure if everybody has uh, been clear about what Caliper is and uh, what's the output uh, of Caliper. I just uh, got uh, received an email from Dan, and Dan may think the output of Caliper is overlapping with PSWG, but I need to give some explanation that uh, the goal of the project and the working group is completely different. The output of Caliper project is the project itself as the output of uh, PSWG is the definition of the metrics and the, the, and the use cases. I think uh, in two days ago, in PSWG regular meeting, we have uh, fully discussed about uh, uh, the relationship between PSWG and the Caliper project. And uh, that is, uh, mm, PSWG will be in charge of uh, defining how uh, the metrics are and uh, the pro pro process of how to benchmark these metrics and uh, Caliper will implement these metrics and uh, following the procedure. Dan, do you want to? Yeah, sorry, I was trying to pull up the. Yeah, I was doing the same. I think it may have evolved a little bit. Um, I think there's some some inherent linkage without getting the the proposal in front of me directly, but I think there's some inherent linkage in the metrics that would be output by Caliper or any uh, sort of test harness and what the definitions of those metrics need to be as defined by the performance working group. So I think the, the timing here is a little bit awkward. You know, it's great that, that you've got this Caliper project started, but I wouldn't want there to be a Hyperledger project available today that was then sending um, an inconsistent message about what we felt meaningful metrics were and how those metrics were to be generated. So what I would prefer to see is giving the, the uh, PSWG uh, an adequate amount of time to create those definitions and, and create specifications so that there are then requirements for a project, uh, be it Caliper or any other project, to actually adhere to those guidelines. I think today Caliper would be in an unfair position that uh, it's def defining something without those requirements in place. So I'd prefer to see uh, Caliper come back in, you know, whatever the appropriate amount of time is for the, the PSWG to have created those definitions. 
Uh, I think uh, for for a project uh, entering incubation to it goes mature, it uh, takes months, even years time. And uh, uh, I, I don't know when the matrix can be fully accepted, uh, can be well defined and fully accepted by her pleasure community. And I think it also takes uh, a lot of time. So I don't think uh, uh, starting the things running in parallel, in parallel would uh, try, would uh, deliver different messages to to the users or the readers. So if we uh, if we had to start the project after the def definition comes out, I doubt it could be too late. I think if we want to uh, uh, help the customers to pick the technology as fast as possible, I think better to do far, do these things in advance before they uh, to help uh, accept the technology. Uh, so my uh, yeah my my interpretation of this last uh, a couple of weeks ago when we talked about this and and I did comment it on this. Um, was, was that uh, caliber is a, a framework and, you know, regardless of what metrics uh, the performance group finally agreed upon but this is a framework and it certainly you know as we know it would require a lot of work you know how to set these things up because you know currently our uh, hyperledger projects um, are quite complex. I'm, I'm talking about from from fabric, for example. You know, to set up a network, they have these things actually defined in such a way that one can ascertain performance um, would take quite a bit of work. Uh, so because of that, I thought that you know this project is to try to to define that framework and try to set that up, and then would dovetail with the performance work group output. To implement specific use cases on the metrics, and because of this framework, we would have uh, a infrastructure in which we would be able to uh, to measure the performance of our current projects. So that's the separation that that I thought I I came out with two weeks ago. Um, that because of that, it seemed to me that there's still a lot of works from logistics point of views for Caliber to to continue without having to have any specific use cases or metrics at this point. So, so I, I, I have a question. Sorry, somebody else wanted to say something. So, is, is John, I'll get your help on that first. So, here's a question. So, that we, I think we have two two things here, right? We have we have the, the performance uh, scalability kind of working group. This is kind of one thing that we don't have the requirements and the mandate yet. And we would like to get fitted from all projects, not just Fabric and not just Sotus, just to get like a chart uh, that we, we just approved like a few minutes ago. And they will have an output and it will take some time to kind of iron out the requirements and then they set up, okay, this is what we want to do. And now how do we implement it, right? So this is one, one, one track. The other track is like, hey, let's have a framework that is generic enough, extensible and we'll be able to harness it to specific needs and maybe some other projects will contribute to it because some of the maintainers will know more about this project. The question, the, the, I, I get that. The question I have, do we need to make the call now? Like, can we try to revisit this in a month or two? Is, is there any downside in working in parallel without accepting it yet? Like, is, is it a timely thing? That's what I'm asking. Because we, we, things will get a little bit more clear, I think, in a month or two. That, that's what I feel like. What do you guys think? Jonathan. So the other uh, question it, it, that I have it, here, oh, excuse me. The other question I have it, is why wait? Um, is it okay that we do it as an incubation project and an incubation we don't need to set such a stiff requirement? Or um, do we think that, I mean, what's the, the question is twofold, what's the value in waiting and then also what's the harm in waiting? So Nathan, I think that, for me, um, performance is a really sensitive issue, um, and it's going to be very easy to um, mis 
lead. Um, I, you know, look, if, if performance were central to what we were doing, we'd all go back to using distributed databases because they're way more performant than we're going to get out of blockchains. The, the messaging around what constitutes the metrics and how the metrics are reflective of a particular usage um, has to be baked into what we're doing. We, we are a hyperledger, right? So um, having some expression of metrics, even implicitly in a project like this, um, becomes a statement about kind of values and um, uh, uh, you know, a, a framework for comparison priority, right? So uh, I'm, I'm. The, the danger is that we are dealing with something that's very sensitive without having thought through it. This is a little different than a lot of the other projects that we've looked at in that sense. So the the question is uh, uh, twofold, right? One is whether to start working on such a framework, or and the other question around sensitivity comes from publishing the results. So according to me, those are uh, slightly different questions. And in fact, uh, it will take quite a while after you set up, after you start working on the framework to come out with any, uh, any public results. So if the sensitivity is around publishing results, then, um, we should, uh, you know, uh, we will, we should be saying that uh, coming out of this incubation project, uh, these results will not be published unless there's a thorough review by uh, PSWG uh, first and then by the TSC before any results are even made available to anybody. No, no. So two weeks ago, we discussed that very point of publication of results, and I think we had agreement, uh, at least on the people were among the people who were on the call, that the group, should, I mean, this project should stay away from publishing any results. And I'm glad to say that at the end of the motivation section, there is actually a paragraph that was added on that uh, on that front, basically saying we're not into publishing results. This is really just building the tool so that people can do their own evaluation now i think you know i had the same concern as what dan expressed with regard to you know a bit of the timing challenge because this is supposed to leverage the outcome of the psw working group and 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 we don't have that yet so the question becomes can this group already do any work that would be useful without the input from the PSWG? And I, you know, my initial reaction was, well, they should just wait. And then I thought, well, there's probably so much work to do already to even build a framework that would, you know, that would function with take two, two of the frameworks we have. They can probably work on that without getting into the details of what the matrix are. At the same time, I'm concerned that for practical reason, you know, they are going to develop some matrix just to play around with this. And, and be able to develop and test the framework. And then we fall into this issue that has been raised, which I think is valid about, you know, having already, a, you know, some matrix in a Hyperledger project published and that people are going to think there's some form of endorsements behind them when there aren't. So um, there's been some discussion in the chat and this was the point that I was going to make as well in the sense that even though, to your point, I know that the proposal says we won't publish any numbers, the, the, the point of Caliper is to let people do their own measurement. And I think the concern that's being expressed and I share it is that people are going to run this and uh, either they may not use it appropriately or, you know, um, or they'll abuse it and they will publish the numbers themselves, you know, whether it's in blog posts or press releases or whatever. And then all of a sudden we start getting into a situation where um, something that is Hyperledger branded is making an assertion whether, you know, that, that we, that we don't necessarily have full agreement on in terms of, is that a, an accurate measure and so forth. And so I share, the concern um, that is being expressed. I do think that 
you know, Victor, to your point that it is important and, and others have made this point as well, that we get moving and start the process of developing some of this stuff. The, 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 the challenge here is that the PSWG hasn't yet sort of done the work of defining what a measure is, how it should be measured, um, and so forth. And I think barring that, having a project that's doing measurement is going to be, or, or is, or, or can be measured by, you know, through its, through its execution, um, uh, could present problems. And the other concern that I would have is that I think we need to be in a situation where all of the, um, uh, all of the, the ledger projects that we have, you know, whether it's fabric or sawtooth or Roja, Burrow or um, Indies uh, underlying uh, fabric, um, need to be in a position that um, uh, that that caliper can be used effectively with their uh, runtime environment, and um, so that we aren't sort of. Uh, you know, so that we aren't putting ourselves in a position where we're able to measure one but not others, and so therefore people are going to draw different conclusions from that. So, I I think that you know, given that we just approved the performance and scaling working group charter, Victor, that the the right way to approach this would be for those who were uh, you know sponsoring this proposal to engage directly with Mark and the team in the in the performance and scaling working group. And, you know, and we can, you know, we can do show and tell, you know, the, the code is there, it's out there, right? I mean, people can see it now. The, the challenge is when is the right time to bring it in for, for appropriate branding? Because we are going to have to deal with this very carefully. We're going to have to put all kinds of constraints on who can say what. Um, uh, I, ideally, you know, we get Brian and 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 Greg and so forth from a branding perspective to make sure that the, the that the that it isn't going to be abused um, uh, and that there are certain restrictions or guidelines that are published about how people talk about performance measures through something like this. You know, um, uh, we just have to be very careful, um, uh, I think, and deliberate about how we go about this. So, I, I you know, again, I I, uh, I think I share the. Um, uh, you know, the, the sentiment that's been expressed in, in almost all of the discussion that, you know, this is a good start on a good piece of work. And so we don't want to necessarily um, diminish what has been done. That That's a good thing. The the challenge is how do we get this and integrate it correctly and, 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 um, and thoughtfully into the, the Hyperledger umbrella itself. And I think the best way to achieve that is probably to work directly through the PSWG to get to a point where then the working group can make a recommendation to the TSC that says, yeah, we're ready for this. Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, so this is Mark. I, I, um, I, I, I think, go ahead. I just have a quick question here is that whether, you know, uh, the performance group is responsible for defining the framework as well as the metrics, or we'll only focus on the metrics, but not the framework. Because to me, Caliber is a framework, and in my mind, it will take a long time. It's not like it's ready out there and it's ready to go. It will take us a year to get these things ready. As I remember, folks in IBM developed their own framework to do their own performance work, and today, it's nowhere near there, right? It will take a long time. So that's just only my comments there and question. Right. So my my thoughts on all of this are um, ideally I would have waited a little bit for Caliper, but I think, you know, it's also a very good driving function for the PSWG. People can see, you know, I've started a discussion. Okay, you know, you want to measure transactions per second. Let's define a transaction. And we spent, you know, a lot of cycles and comments and documents and, and stuff on, you know, and people realize there's no simple definition of a transaction because it depends on the use case and things like that. So I think it's a good driving function in that regard. Um, and I think also by making it a project and in incubation, people can come and, and they can, 
you know, if they want to do something with performance, they can contribute to a project that's there versus coming off in, you know, two months and some other group wants to do their own proposal because they don't see one already existing. As far as publishing results, um, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but I would think we could put something in the software license um, until we're ready to make a decision on how the tool can be used that says this tool can only be used for internal measurements. The results cannot be published. Um, I, you know, I don't know if that, that, that will fly, but you know, that restriction can be removed later. Um, but I think overall, you know, we want some common tool based on the feedback. I remember from our meeting in Washington when I first proposed this was, you know, we want a common tool that can be used to fairly judge different implementations. Um, and, you know, but there's also um, uh, not a requ I guess a requirement's a good word that, you know, we need to be able to, to say, hey, for this, you know, if you want to do asset tracking, this is, you know, the key things you're looking for. This is, um, you know, the transactions per second, latency, whatever, um, you know, because different environments are going to have different, re you know, different key parameters and, you know, different implementations will address those. So, you know, I remember Brian saying, he, you know, it would be great if we could come up with some kind of chart that would show, you know, Fabric is good at these three things, um, Satu is good at these two, Go Ethereum is good at nothing or, you know, these four things, whatever. So, um, you know, I, I view that as like one of the long-term goals of the PSWG is to be able to pull together results and, and do this stuff. So, so Mark, if if uh, today they do not, the uh, there seem to be quite a bit of uh, uh, controversy about uh, starting the incubation today. So if they do not, uh, I mean, looks like there is no consensus on that. Uh, starting the incubation today. So if they do not start the incubation today, will the Caliper project still go ahead without publicly uh, uh, being available as an incubator project uh, in conjunction with the PSWG to do the things that you just described so that you can, uh, you can, do, uh, you can uh, start incubating it later? I think um, I don't see why the PSWG would not work with the Caliper people if they continue, you know, if they choose to continue to work on it. Um, you yeah, know, they're I mean, members of the PSWG as well, so. Right, um, and, I, and that was actually what I was recommending, Mark, would be that the Caliper team and any others that want to engage in pushing this forward, that they engage directly with the PSWG. And, you know, to Vipin's point, I think, work towards alignment of exactly what the requirements are, what the measures are and so forth, so that we can be evolving this to a point where it does, I think as Dan said in, in the comments, that it does meet our requirements um, uh, for it to be incubated. I, you know, th this, is, can this, I is different than, this is different than a lot of other, you know, I mean, we, you know, uh, another platform, you know, uh, even another platform that was, uh, you know, sort of, uh, uh, you know, let's say another Ethereum platform or something like that wouldn't necessarily be a problem. Um, uh, but with something yeah. like the sensitivity, I mean, there's a reason that spec works in secret, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and that, but the challenge is in open source is that we really can't work in secret, but I think at least in this context, if we can work, um, collaboratively um, and keep the code unbranded, as it were, um, uh, until we're ready, I think that would be the best alternative. It, I mean, it is, after all, it is open source, it's under Apache license and so forth. And so um, uh, I, I think if we can continue to work it in that direction, align it with the requirements as specified by the PSWG, that is, Kind of get us close, you know. Again, other than, other than that, I think you know. I shared Dan's comment in in chat a, a little bit further up that you can't sort of put in a license. You can't use this, right? <laughs> People are going to do it 
and they're going to do stupid things, and then you know we have to go stamp it out, and that that'll just be. Hmm. Okay, can I? Um, I would like to add something because um, uh, I mean, as Boru, I, I think I can confidently state that we have like over 100 transactions BFT over a global network. I would even dare say 400 transactions um, confirmed per second. That, by my overview, that is that is at least a decent performance within the Hyperledger community. Um, at the same time there is not necessary what, what I would recommend I would actually just want to build on the idea of, of putting some sort of um, collaborative proposal for it, namely that uh, instead of putting in the license that it cannot be published maybe there should be a strong recommendation that that it needs to include all um, hyperledger projects um, because and I'll be frank here from my perspective. I mean, the Hyperledger community does not pay me for my job, so I have to do full time work. And on top of that, uh, single handedly and support an entire blockchain client. So you will have noticed that there is no progress anymore because there is an overload of work and there is no contribution from the Hyperledger community. So it is very much a, a question of what does the Hyperledger community want, right? Like, um, I mean, for me, this this is almost at a breaking point. I, I can do different things with my life, um, but if you're going to propose a uh, a, a measuring uh, tool, I, I very much welcome it, but it needs to be equally measured, and then there needs to be a commitment from the Caliper team that it, that it works with all projects, because I cannot take this on additionally. Um, to, to integrate it myself into into uh, caliper so so that is my objection I think that we would perform very well but I would not want it because I do not have the time to do this so I would want that commitment from from hyperledger yeah. that it says to caliper project like if you want to go forward then then you need to work with all projects and actually contribute towards all projects yeah um, another question that I have for the caliper people is are they giving up some of their brand authority or some of the, the reputation of the benchmarking tool by becoming part of the project itself? Um, I, I, I don't mean to propose this as a, joining Hyperledger is a bad idea, but I, I want to ask the question to make sure that, that they have their own answer to it. Um, because it's like the NoSQL benchmark frameworks that compare various um, tools across one another. One of the values that usually they have is that they're independent of the developers in the project. So they can say the really bad things that developers would not want them to say, like, you know, you're not doing partitioning correctly or that you have fatal flaws in terms of your replication. Um, things that happen as you do benchmarking and you find where the software falls over and fails in interesting ways. I, I think we are open source it. Uh, that means we are try, trying to uh, have everybody involved in the development of Caliper and they listen to everybody's advice. And uh, we have connected with developers of all supported or to be supported frameworks, invited them to join to Caliper and uh, uh, giving their advice and inputs to the project and to help the, help the project to produce acceptable uh, to help the project to produce acceptable for uh, bench benchmark methods. So I think we are open and uh, not trying to uh, control everything. Um, Victor, can I just ask a question on this? What when when you think about what sort of the principal value is of caliper is it um uh repeatable execution right i mean one of the critical things that you have to have when you're measuring performance is you got to be able to repeat the execution in, in some consistent way a second option would be the set of metrics that are a part of it that are kind of descriptions and some extensible framework for for building metrics um or is it really the ability to compare and um, what, what do you see as the kind of principal value here? I think the motivation of the project is that when 
when we are talking with our customers, we often come and they, they were just to answer the question, which one is better, which one is suitable for my use cases. And sometimes you know, explain these questions just by words is difficult. So I think maybe prov uh, provide a tool for users may help their help them to make up their mind more quickly. So that's why Caliper came out. But uh, to be fair, that I think Caliper should provide a very clear and uh, easy understanding metric definition. And since PSWG is doing that, and uh, Caliper, uh, and I think uh, uh, Caliper developers are, are very active in PSWG work, and so, uh, and we are trying to push and uh, push the work and uh, help the definition comes out, so we can uh, use a, a a unified definition uh, between PSWG and uh, Kyper project. So I think the 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 most important value of Kyper project is to help customers to make up their mind more quickly. So Hello? are we? Uh, sorry. Go ahead, Martha. Uh, I have another question. Uh, I have another question. So in terms of development, to touch on something that Ben was saying, uh, how do you imagine uh, development of Caliper and um, kind of uh, porting it to different frameworks? Do you expect that to happen from the main contributors to each framework currently? So like from Borrow and um, Aroha and so on? Or will you provide uh, people from uh, Caliper who are working on Caliper currently? that they will learn uh, the projects and will port uh, Caliper to those projects? Yes, I like for Fabric being suggested that we reach out to Doming and uh, for Sotus, Dan suggested me reach to James from Bitwise and uh, for Yoroha, um, I think we also have a developer get involved and uh, who would help to integrate uh, Eroha with Caliper. And also, um, every, every time we are trying to support a platform or framework, we will ask the uh, main developer of the framework if they are willing to provide some resources to Caliper so that um, they wouldn't say that uh, uh, because we are not very familiar with the framework, so make the, some uh, bad integrating integration or bad settings of the project. So I think for it is better to have these uh, framework developers to integrate the framework to with Caliper, and that would be more convincing and more acceptable. And you can refer to the resources part of the project. Uh, as you can see, every, every part framework we are supposed to support, support uh, have one main contributor in the resource list. Thank you. So, so where are we? I'm, I think, but I, again, I, I don't want to predis, pre, presuppose, <clears throat> but I, I think we're sort of at the place where Caliper is going to work with PSWG and get to a point where everybody can be comfortable with incubating Caliper. Uh, but meanwhile, we work with it sort of independently hosted. Is, is that where I think everybody is? And uh, I think uh, Caliper, Caliper developers are and are working closely with PSWG. 
Oh, no, no, no. Uh, Victor, don't get me. I, I, I wasn't suggesting otherwise. I'm just saying that the continued model is where we go until we get to the point where the PSWG is uh, comfortable recommending to the TSC that we uh, incubate the project. Maybe I could get a vote on that, Todd. So can I get a vote on having the caliper team work closely with the PSWG until the point that the PSWG can make a recommendation to the TSC? Yeah, we can do a vote, or do you just want to call for any objections from the TSC? Um, okay, I, yeah, I think I vote on this subject. I don't think uh, it is appropriate for the TSC to vote on whether the PSWG should work closely with uh, Caliper. I mean, why, why is that even relevant? Oh, the question is whether we, we decide now yes or no, or we decide to, to postpone the vote. That, that I guess no, the because uh, many people are saying that, you know, for various reasons, that uh, so there is no consensus among the among uh, the TSC members. That's what I, I hear. Yeah, but we're not so turning what, it what down I hear, either. Right. Yeah, well, no, exactly. Okay, so let, let's do, let's do this. Let's have a straw vote. It's not a real vote. Let's just have a straw vote because I I'm trying to sense whether there is consensus, and I can't necessarily tell that there is. This is where I am. Um, I realize that there are some people that. Uh, are, but, but not everybody is, has spoken. So why don't we do this? Why don't we just have a straw vote, Todd, um, to the point that I was uh, trying to, to make before, which was the caliper uh, developers work closely and in the PSWG until such time as the PSWG is make is ready to make a recommendation to the TSC that the project proposal go forward. Well, I uh, could. Chris, I think working close with PSW and until it is happy to recommend it, uh, recommend the caliper to TSC is that that don't need uh, a vote. So that could be a suggestion from TSC. I think vote is used for make decisions whether caliper should get incubated. Yeah, that's why I said a straw vote. A straw, a straw poll, or a straw poll. A straw poll is oh. just a sense of the group. It's not, there's no decision made. No, no, but I think it's important to clarify that point. I mean, it seems to be some confusion because what I'm hearing is what the TSC is leaning towards is nobody is ready to quite say yes now, but at the same time, we don't want to turn it down forever. And so yeah. we're trying to find a way in between where we say, let's postpone this decision. In the meantime, we encourage you to work with the PSWG. And when the PSWG feels this is a good time to reconsider, we will do so. But let's say that, that we did take a vote and we voted not to accept a project, Caliper or any other project as an incubated project there's nothing that would prevent those contributors from coming back with a revised proposal in the future that's true that permanently... i think it's a matter of signal you know well <laughs> right uh, we well you know everything is volunteer here so you know the, the question yeah. is that about these developers whether they come back the next time or not so i mean you know things are <laughs> it's, it's not like people are eager to work with us right so there's a big difference, right, between saying no, don't come now, and but maybe later, and saying go away, and that's what we're yeah. trying to talk about here. Right. I don't think anybody's saying go away. <laughs> exactly. Nobody wants to say go away. That's the right. thing. We're trying to be careful not to shut them down right. so that they feel they have no room here. Uh, Arno, no matter what you say, the users are going to are already starting. Uh, especially among uh, the so-called consulting companies, KPMG, Accenture, so on and so forth, they have measurement uh, uh, projects going on. This, you know, whether you say to these guys go away or not, it doesn't matter. The the, the whole point is the the whole point is that what we what we that means me and Victor I hear him say that is both 
voting on this topic is on this particular point is not necessary. Uh, we hear that uh, the TSC, nobody's saying go away. We know that already, uh, but they are not ready to incubate at the moment. That's yeah. what we hear. Yeah, right. but the fact that KPMG is working on some tool that they will publish at some point to some people for some payments doesn't, you know, that, that doesn't. I don't, I don't feel any pressure, you know, to to right. to accept or reject another project. You see, what I mean, just the fact that somebody is doing something that should, we should hurry up. Say, oh my God, somebody else is competing with us, you know, and they will no, have no, it. No, 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 that's not that's not what I meant. What I meant is it's a the practical reason, thing. Reason, yeah, the reason I, I was talking exactly. about a practical thing that means. Two of you are already 1.0, uh, and people who want to use them are already measuring. Um, maybe no, they no. will publish uh, to a uh, select group of people, but there are already uh, measurement efforts going on. So that's yeah. that's beside the point. What mm -hmm. I'm saying is, in terms of this particular uh, topic, you know, of course you can go ahead and take a vote, a straw poll, uh, but uh, the the point is, no incubation currently, but uh, maybe later on. I mean, well, I think, the message, and, it looks like they got. Right, and so I think that's sort of where we are. We don't have to take a vote. I think <laughs> what we're really doing is tabling the proposal <laughs> for another day. Um, and uh, I would suggest that that's where we are, unless there's any objections so that we can um move on to the interledger proposal no not an objection we're just in one line you know we're, we're, most of us are going to be in chicago uh very soon with mark and others and we can also discuss it in person and maybe yeah, yeah so that that may help as well okay yeah. so we talk to, yeah right. I, I i think the thing i would ask is and we can discuss this in chicago um you know is is the main of you know figure out what the main objections are right now to making, putting it in incubation. Is it just too early or are there just concerns over how results would be used? Things like that. I don't think we're at the point where there's any code that, you know, once it comes in, people can start running this, this tool against fabric or whatever and, and get results right away. Um, I can tell you, I, I can tell you in one line what mine are just in very, very briefly. I think that it's easier for me to evaluate the tool against a requirement. So once I have a requirement, I can find the best tool for the job. This, this is very, very objectively. And, and I don't feel like you have that yet. Okay. I think that was well, a succinct one. Yeah. All right, well, let's table this and um, you know we'll have a discussion in Chicago. How's that sound? Yep. And we can move on. Okay. If we haven't scared the interledger people away. And yeah, hopefully not guys, don't take it. Yeah, don't take it in a negative way, seriously. We need to so catch up. We have, we have 10 minutes left, and we have uh, another proposal for the Hyperledger Interledger Java proposal. And um, is somebody on to pitch that? I think uh, Isaac from Everest is the one that dropped it on the list. Isaac, are you on? Anyone from the Interledger Java proposal? Okay, that makes that actually a lot easier. <laughs> for that for next week, and let's make sure that we have whoever uh, teed up to, to present it. Um, Dave, you want to give a quick hey. team update? Hey, uh, before we go to the security team update, it looks like uh, there's not an understanding of what was just agreed upon. Um, I, I think that from the chat, right, um, that it needs to be clarified what uh, is happening with Cali Caliper and the PSWG. Wow. wow. So I, I think it's that, you know, we're encouraging the Caliper contributors to continue to work with the PSWG. And at the point that the PSWG has formalize its requirements and is ready to make a recommendation to the PSC, then that would be an appropriate time for Caliper or any other performance related project to propose themselves to the TSC and show how they align with that direction. 
Victor, does that make sense to you? Okay, I I think we can discuss again uh, in inside the PSWG to see whether uh, it is suit when and uh, whether it is suitable for PSWG to recommend the caliper to TSC. Um, thanks, Victor. Danny, you're up. Okay. Yeah, okay, so security team update is pretty straightforward. Um, uh, are there, uh, uh, so even though Isaac is not on, uh, on the phone, are there any comments uh, or questions about the interledger proposal? Have people, uh, uh, has CSC uh, had time to uh, read through the proposal? And is there something that I could forward to the people proposing it uh, so that uh, I can talk with them? Uh, or would you like to move uh, past it and uh, go to the security update? Well, Marta, I'd like to just move to the security update and let the interledger team make their pitch first before we hit them up with a bunch of questions. I think that would be best. Makes sense. Thank you. Go ahead, Dave. All right. Uh, take three. Um, <clears throat> so uh, security team update is pretty straightforward. Uh, we have had a couple of issues go through our confidential system uh, related to uh, some of the security auditing, but nothing serious up to this point on Fabric. Um, we are dealing with one infrastructure issue where the confidential security bugs are leaking to Rocket Chat, um, but that should be resolved here pretty soon in the next couple of days. Um, the, I, I made some updates to the security wiki pages, um, tightening up the security handling pro policy and some of the other uh, recommendations for secure coding. Um, and Let's see, what else? Oh, we have members from Borough and Indy now integrated into the security team. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to say is that Netitude, the company that Hyperledger contracted with to do the security audit of Fabric, is planning on being at the Chicago Hackfest. They're going to do their report out on what they found and, and recommendations in Chicago. Um, I have also reached out to Sawtooth and Roja to look at their 1.0 um, estimates because as part of their 1.0, we're going to work with Netitude again um, to have those projects uh, evaluated as well. As well. Um, that's it. I mean, security is, we're looking good so far. Um, nothing, nothing serious is being found and the infrastructure is going into place. I, I am revisiting branching model with Fabric at the moment, um, so uh, that's on Jira if you guys want to jump in with your opinions. I would like to um, discuss, I'm, the reason I'm reopening it is because we're now looking at GitHub as, as a potential solution instead of Garrett because there's new DCO integration at uh, GitHub. And the main objection in the past to op, uh, adopting the GitFlow branching model was that Garrett uh, didn't handle feature branching very well. So, but GitHub does, and it's a tool that a lot more people are more familiar with. So, um, anyway, we've reopened that discussion. I'd like to invite everybody to take in, uh, you know, to join in if you care. Um, that's it. I don't really have anything else. I don't want to take up too much time. Any questions? I think we still need to agree on whether we want feature branches and in what capacity. Do we want to have, I was happy to find a hybrid way, kind of in between, not to do like every two people have their own feature branch, but we have like a pretty restricted set of feature branches. So for example, we want to talk about- Hey, know, Jonathan, yeah. <laughs> can we take this to the thread? I'm sorry, I didn't want to make this into an argument about feature branching. <laughs> no, no, it's a hybrid. Sure, sure, but yeah. 
Okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Is there any other questions besides arguing about future branching on the call? All right. I'll hand it back right. to you. Thanks, Dave. And then finally, Tracy, in the last couple of minutes, um, the project reporting discussion that sort of, um, well, you went on vacation, everybody went on vacation for <laughs> the month of August is sort of a black hole. Um, and I think we probably should think about resurrecting that. And so maybe I could ask you to sort of start that on email and, um, and let us bring it forward again. Yeah, sure, Chris. I'll, I'll bring it to the email. I'll just kind of uh, bring that email back up to the top of everybody's uh, list and uh, we can look at project reporting. Um, I think it's really important based on some of the things I've heard on this um, this call today from some of our projects and their um, current status. So uh, let's make sure that we bring that back up on the email list and then uh, talk about it in next week's meeting. Yep. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you, everybody. And um, hopefully we'll see you all next week. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Have Thanks. a lovely day, everyone. Bye. See ya. Stay